All right. We are at the geoscheduling call Tuesday, October 20th. And yeah, do we want to try the epic view again or should we go through yeah, the usual uh, way? So uh, yeah, there's a group by option next to add list there. Sorry, I was um, messing oh. with this, the uh, Zoom controls. Ah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So in the closed column, um, thanks, Nick, for suggesting that this should be closed. It should be. I had put resolves. Uh, and then the issue number, but apparently resolves is not one of the keywords. Um, so yeah, that's that's closed. It was kind of like a long running thing I was doing on the side. Um, so happy that's closed. It's just uh, improving the query. Does anyone, yeah. sorry, just off topic, does anyone know if there was an issue out there that changed those keywords? Because closes doesn't work either anymore. And it's, I want to know what, why and maybe like what I should oh. use. It is a little frustrating. I've been like finding issues all over the place that weren't closing. Oh, I don't know. Um, that sounds like a regression or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I don't know. I just wanted to call it out. It seems like maybe those keywords aren't doing what they're intended to do anymore. Also, if you like, if you used to create a, a branch with your issue number in it at the very bottom, the MR template would default and say closes. Now it just says related to, so they like removed that logic. Oh, actually I do remember um, talk about making it like the default behavior in for GitLab, for, for like GitLab org maybe or something. Like, like pe people wanted to stop things from closing automatically. So maybe that's, maybe that was intentional. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, this one is something that Tone is working on. It was just kind of follow up from the merge request diffs uh, replication um, epic. And I am currently reviewing his merge request and it's not too big, but it's a small refactor. Yeah, I can talk about this one real quick. Um, so yeah, this uh, proof of concept for a single command to promote a secondary to primary was merged. Uh, it works for single node secondaries. Um, and Douglas also followed up with a, a little piece of documentation for, um, for single node secondaries. Uh, so I think the next step is, to extend it to support uh, multi-node setups. Um, I went ahead and took one of the issues. There's a bunch of issues in that epic kind of listing out the different, the different node types to support. Um, and I, from what I understand, um, the work to extend that support should, should apply to all of those. And then it's just kind of a matter of going down and, and checking off that list. So if we look at the billboard and just the open column for that epic, I took one of those node, uh, one of those issues to support uh, a, a node a Rails application node and put it into open just to signify the, the next step in this. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's the appropriate issue to have next, but just wanted to have something there to kind of show that uh, extending that support is uh, is next in the epic. Okay, that makes sense to me. Moving on to move LFS files to subsurface framework. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I, I just added like a, we have an epic for it, but we didn't have any issues in it. So, um, but it is 
an upcoming priority. And so I just <laughs> created a placeholder issue. Um, but I think it would be great. Yeah, I think we could use an, uh, an engineering owner for the Epic and I'm not really sure. And then uh, to help break down what needs to be done. I, I, I don't really have a good sense of like, if this is something that can all be done in one MR, if there uh, will be multiple steps to it. But uh, um, if someone wants to um, assign themselves and then flesh out the the epic, that'd be awesome. Yay, thanks Alex, did I see you raise your hand? Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, uh, I'll just uh, one other thing. I'll also note that um, moving these is, uh, of course, we were already talking about doing it, but um, I think it's it's even more important to prioritize now that we've determined that uh, moving existing data types over to the self-service framework is a blocker for some of the redesign stuff that we want to do, um, for, uh, some of the redesign um, that we want to do for the replication views. So um, we, we were already prioritizing it, but I think we'll just want to keep that in mind and, and make sure Fabian um, knows that that those should continue to be prioritized highly if we want to um, save ourselves some work uh, when it comes to the redesign. Yeah, thank you, that makes sense. Um, yeah, just thinking out loud, like moving LFS files to SSF, it's going to be the same, it's gonna start with the same amount of effort as it is to add something because you gotta add all the SSF code for LFS files. Oh, well, not exactly the same. Um, but then there's also like the harder part, which is like the migrations because some of them have a little bit of different schemas, like in the registry and on the primary for verification and maybe. Uh, yeah, there's no verification fields on some of the tables on the primary. And then there's also the, the fact that there is existing data in the registry that you need, you, need, you need to make sure that if it's synced, it stays synced ideally. So anyways, it's not, it's not going to be trivial. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. It sounds like maybe, maybe even a little more involved than just adding a new data type since it's, since uh, it's not just a matter of following the. Yeah. In some ways. The dots. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, so we're on to snippet replication. Um, yeah, front end is it can't progress until like the GraphQL API and stuff um, is implemented in the back end. Um, backfill of, exi of existing snippets. Valerie started working on that, but then he got pulled off to some other high priority things, um, I believe. This one, snippets appear broken due to feature flag removal. Um, I put in a fix. We were going to remove it from quarantine in a separate merge request. Um, that one hasn't gone in, especially because over the weekend staging was broken and I think it's working now. So maybe that can progress again. Um, but yeah, the thing is fixed. I believe it's just the test is still quarantined. So that's all that's happening in this. Um, I don't know where the API thing is, oh, it's in ready for development. So um, nobody's working on that yet. I think that's it for snippet replication. Uh, yeah, I can talk about this one. So yeah, the, the standby cluster work merged. Um, and I think it, yeah, I think it's made the release. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I, uh, we didn't really merge it with with docs, uh, which I, I think uh, is something that um, we we can definitely do do a better job of keeping an eye on. But in the future, but uh, I think in in this case, uh, 
Gabriel uh, is going to work on some minimal docs uh, in in the geo admin doc. So I guess that's a separate repo, anyways. And then um, we'll we'll point to that and get the release post merged. I kind of held off since we needed that documentation link. So um, we'll we'll merge it with some kind of minimal docs that say, okay, assuming that you you know you've set up console and a Petroni cluster and all that, like here's the configuration to um, enable a standby cluster. Uh, and then we can uh, we can go into more more detail in the future. I think it, maybe a, a walkthrough video would be would be nice to sit down and do at some point. Oh, and there's the documentation issue. Yeah. Okay. A walkthrough video to go up on Unfiltered would actually be pretty sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can talk about maintenance mode. Um, I am done with the work on the string of banner message. That is, that's the other issue to the right. Um, I just have to assign it for you, but the work of it. Um, the code is there. Um, I start working on the other issue, the one on the left, um, which is about blocking non get HTTP requests. And I dug a bit more into the other discussions that happened around it. So it was also participating in one. Um, and looks like there are a lot more things to consider other than just the non get HTTP requests. Which is, for example, if you block all of these requests, um, the admin cannot sign in, they cannot test for example, if everything is going fine. So I saw that there were some discussions around it already a year ago. I will look into them again, and it looks like we need to rethink it a bit and design exactly what we, what permissions we want with the admin or somebody else admin to be So this is rather in discovery mode right now. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... Where are, so like, where are the discussions about kind of the different design? Um, um, or would you mind linking it in here? Um, yeah, I would do that. Cool, awesome. Okay. Oh, these are in ready for development. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then there's this one. Um, yeah, this is for me to document to. Um, uh, did I see it? I did, yeah. So um, once we have something more done for the maintenance mode, I will start documenting it so that we have something to release for uh, this release. Okay. But I'm not working on this right now. I just update the other issue with one conversation that's going on. Um, okay, thank you. this one um, okay so that's it for maintenance mode um, adding verification to the self-service framework um, a lot of work has already been done and if you have uh, added a new replicable model to the framework, then you know that there's a bunch of like checks and related stuff that is basically not really used. So um, this is like continuing that effort. And I started to work on automatically verify packages on secondaries. And um, while doing that, I realized that like the background workers and like how that happens, um, it can it can be reused across primary and secondary. So I also took uh, this issue, um, assigned it to myself, ensure package file checksum on primary. 
Um, yeah, so I'm kind of, I've been working on that. I hope to get uh, some MRs up for, for those issues this week. Um, and then also in ready for development, we have more continuation of uh, verification on secondaries. Hey, Josh. Hey, sorry, John Lee. Hey. So that's it for the verification. And we're down to test gaps in geo group. Um, yeah. Is Jenny, Jenny's not here, right? Yeah, and I think she was out last week. So um, yeah, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where these are. Yeah, I did see there were some um, failures over like over the weekend. Yeah, but I know, I know, I I, I found one like unrelated um, issue that was kind of breaking. Um, I think the the secondary being set up in the QA tests, um, or at least part of it, like having to do with repositories. So I think that needs to be fixed for some of those failures to go away, but I don't know if that's all of them. Okay. Yeah, I do see that this MR for adding the tests uh, is merged. So I just had this question to Jenny if, it, if it's okay to close, but yeah, um, pro probably good to leave open until we can figure out the staging phases yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, actually, these staging ones. Um, so actually, those are probably the, the staging failure that Akriti fixed um, by restarting the, the secondary. Um, it yeah. just wasn't working. It was showing a blank page. Yeah. I checked again today in the Slack channel for this, and there were no more geo staging videos. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So these are probably resolved now. Cool. Cool. Okay. So adding an end to end test for personal snippets, replication, um, is blocked on that other test being quarantined. So I think that should be unblocked soon. Um, yeah, uh, anyways, I'm, I followed up a little bit um, in the MR, but like I said, uh, the tests were breaking due to possibly unrelated things. So I'm gonna follow up um, there or maybe Jenny will uh, before I do, and hopefully that will close. Okay, so that's it for test gaps in GeoGroup. Uh, improve UI UX on administrator panel. We have something closed. Zach. Yeah, oh, we just uh, the renamed the button. For, so the, this issue description is not very good, but we just renamed the button to open replication or replication details instead of saying open projects on the node page. I think if you scroll a little farther down, you might see what she's talking about. Yeah. So right here, that, that button on the left, on that first page on the button, when you click open project, it takes you to a page called geo replication. And that was a little confusing and didn't match up to our UX guidelines. So now the button that says replication details and takes you to the geo replication page. Okay, cool. Super quick fix. Nice. Yeah, this looks oh, like the one that we yeah. yeah had some discussion on. Yeah, last yeah. Week. So this one's ultimately blocked, kind of based on what Nick alluded to mm -hmm. a little earlier. Just the fact that we're kind of in this weird space where uh, 
you know, we support different feature functionality between the different replicate replicable types. And before we start going down this rabbit hole of uh, adding all these features and all this new stuff, I'd really like to start seeing that we can get everything kind of into self-service so that way we can build this, build this functionality once out in self-service and we don't have to worry about it anywhere else. So otherwise we'll have to build it into our RESTful API and we'll have to build it into our Rails controllers to support it on projects, uploads and designs right now as is. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And, and as far as the back end, like we, um, we, we do need to do the migration to SSF anyways. Um, if I don't, so I don't know, does this block, um, a lot of front end work or is there still like a lot of other stuff that can be worked on while so there's another while back end is catching up? There's a, another redesign that I, I don't know where it's kind of located as far as like our board right now, but so we have the redesign of what we call like the replication details, which is where you go and you filter through like the status of each individual replicable item. And then we have the node status page, which has a, a kind of the overview of everything. And so Sung Jun also has a node status page that's going through a redesign in UX research right now. And that one's good to go as is. So we don't have anything blocking that. And that's going to take a significant amount of time anyway that yeah, so I'd say like okay. this, this ha I'd say like this half of the UI redesign is blocked by the individual data types not being there. But as far as like the general uh, node status page, we serve that all from our our kind of older restful uh, geo status yeah. page. And uh, I think like over like 13.3, 13.4, Mike and I kind of worked together and got a lot of that stuff generalized from the Rails controller. And so all that's kind of good to go and generalized already and working as in uh, with no extra work really from what it seems on uh, self-service now, like self-service handles it, so yeah. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. So it sounds like it would be most efficient anyways to like we, we can leave this alone until the backend catches up and continue on other stuff. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's it's probably going to be sitting in that workflow block column for a while then until we can get all those um, back end items done. Um, I'm wondering if we just want to move it. I mean, we uh, yeah, just just move it off the board for now and add the blocking relationships uh, to to the issue when we when we have those. Um, uh, it's taken off geoactive probably makes sense just because yeah. It's not going to be yeah. active for quite a while now. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there an issue? You said that the status, uh, the status view work is is ready to go. Do we have an issue for the front end implementation of that that we can put on the board? Um, I know that there were some design issues somewhere, and I, I I've lost track of them. I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll, yeah, I can just make a note to follow but up. And, yeah. Also not quite sure where they're at with the UX research. I can, I can say like tech, from like a technical standpoint, everything seems to be in order, but I'm not quite sure where we are with the customers. Okay. Yeah, so that might be a good follow up for uh, Sung Jun while Fabian's out. Sounds good. Thanks. All right, so that's it for the uh, ethics. Down here in the closed column. Oh, this issue was moved. Um, actually, so I suppose we want to put Geoactive on the new issue. Is it already on there? Yeah, yeah. let's okay. yeah. yeah, I guess it, it copies all the same. Uh, labels. So, oh yeah, here it is. Right here. Um, okay, so in review, pausing replication fails promotion. Yeah, so I reviewed this uh, just the other day. Um, basically, uh, Valerie has it set up so that we can use point in time recovery. Uh, so when you pause, when you pause replication, it creates a restore point. And then when we do the promotion, it restores to that location instead of trying to mess with any of the other stuff. So 
uh, it looks pretty good. It's a good solution, so. Yeah, this is a really important one. Like it's kind of a huge problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad there's a solution here. Nice. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we'll definitely, um, it, it seems close um, and uh, there's a lot of hard work to try to get it in for 13.5, um, but it, uh, it it missed, but hopefully it'll get in soon and we can, we can get it into the, uh, the earliest patch for that and um, whatever other versions we can, we can patch as well. I was going to say, we had talked about uh, backporting this yeah. to the, to what, like 13, three or something? I don't know. I don't know how yeah. far back we backport things. Yeah, I think it's it's introduced in 13.2. Um, I think the further back you go, it's it's kind of up to the the release managers and it gets less likely the, the further back you go. Um, is this the uh, promotion after pause or is this this rake backup bug? Oh, sorry. This is the promotion, the promotion after, pause. after pause. Oh, okay, cool. No. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry about sorry. that. Sorry. Yeah, I thought I just wanted to make sure. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so yeah, regarding the rake backup bug, um, the community contributor has been pushing commits kind of every every day for the last two days. So um, I think they're still kind of working on it. Um, the last that I saw, yeah, seven hours ago. So I think they might be kind of relying on the CI uh, for running tests. I think might be part of what's happening. So anyways, uh, actually it's green though now. So um, that's good. It's, it's cool to see them still sticking sticking with the MR and uh, con continuing to, to, to work through the feedback. Thanks for uh, working with them on that, Mike and Akriti. So pretty cool to see. Yeah. So that's it for in review and we're over to InDev. Um, this one, Performance Environment Builder, as far as I know, is still being worked on by Nick um, Westbury. Um, there hasn't been an update since last week um, and Jenny's just getting back in. So um, I don't know where Nick is necessarily on that. Yeah, if you wanna just ping in the, in the issue real quick for an update when they get a chance. Oh, should I ping Nick or Jenny? Yeah, maybe, maybe both of them uh, or, okay. yeah. Okay, enable usage ping on geosecondaries, Alex. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I just started working on this yesterday and I mostly have been going through the background and just trying to understand the work that's already been uh, done and what's already been looked into. And my my gut feeling for this right now is that probably this is this should turn into an epic and we should get a couple of smaller discrete issues uh, out from under it. And from those try to identify what we can make, uh, uh, what we can fit into 11.6 or 13.6, whatever number we're working on right now, 13.6. Um, uh, Joshua, I know you have a lot of 
feelings about, <laughs> I, I, I know you, you have some feelings about this. So I was thinking I'd run by the things that I spit out of this, run those by you sure. today yeah, and I mean, uh, see um, what your thoughts are. Yeah. Uh, just, just real quick, the overall importance of this, um, you know, there's, there's multiple OKRs at OKR last quarter, OKR this quarter across the whole organization to get um, kind of group based adoption metrics or other primary performance metrics. And so, um, yeah, this, this is a great indicator we can use to track um, adoption and utilization of geos. Uh, and we can um, use that to gauge the impact of improvements we're making uh, along with also, um, uh, you know, the overall utilization of, of geo. Obviously we do know that, you know, geo tends to have conservative customers that are bigger. And so fewer of them have uh, usage ping turned on, but we can, I think still get some good data and, and usage out of this. Uh, so for example, if we introduce like, you know, um, some improvements to the single URL experience, it'd be interesting to see if we get more people utilizing the, utilizing the secondaries, for example. For sure, data is great. Um, but yeah, if, if, if you wanna pair up on this, I'm, I'm happy to talk through it, uh, maybe offline if it makes sense, or we, yeah, we can do it now. Uh, but I imagine we're probably, yeah, running out of time somewhat here. Yeah, I'll follow up with you. Cool. Cool, thanks Alex. Yeah, good, um, yeah. I think it makes, agree that it makes sense to turn that, turn it into an epic and break out some more. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, this one. I, I think we, yeah, Catalan said um, would make an MR for for this follow up. Um, I guess we can ask for. Ah, okay. So maybe this is the the MR that's that's open for this. Yeah. Cool. Um, yep. So it seems like it's on review. Um, I'll, uh, I'll just change this to in review. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think Gabriel provided an update here, but basically he's working on uh, something that will um, prevent uh, prevent a migration from from getting stuck uh, in the situation that was encountered in in this issue. Um, there will so so basically it will if um, yeah if if this issue is detected it will roll roll back the hash storage migration. But I think there will need to be some work uh, on the Giddily side to actually fix the, the root cause that's preventing um, the migration to hash stores. So, uh, so, so there'll probably be some, uh, I don't think that will be work that, that's done in Geo, but we'll just need to make sure we're, uh, we're properly escalating that to, to Giddily and um, working, working with them to, um, to uh, yeah, to, to get that prioritized. Cause I think, uh, uh, we have a little time, but I, I think we're talking about removing, uh, <laughs> removing hash storage or removing legacy storage um, in Fortino. So, so whatever needs to happen there will will have to be prioritized before fourteen I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, that's it for the end dev. Um, yeah, I don't know, Nick, do you wanna? Um, yeah, I can over? just, yeah, I can, or I can just, yeah, if you wanna share your screen, I can just talk through it real quick. Nothing yeah, sure. too much has changed with the ready for development column. Um, use, uh, usage ping was at the top and um, Alex has taken that, so thank you. Um, yeah, but ev everything else is there kind of in the same order. Um, yeah, we still want to fix uh, fix the replicate geo database command um, to account for the seed project. Um, it's it's uh, I mean there is a workaround for it, but um, I think it's you know 
definitely not not obvious and kind of confusing. So uh, I think we should still still account for still do the work to account for that seed project. Um, and then we want to investigate the um, downtime issues that were discovered uh, a while back by Alex and Jenny. Um, and that's uh, so, so that we can get back to uh, resuming our our regular upgrade tests. Um, and then a couple of uh, bug fixes uh, and, and investigations down below, uh, kind of the same as what's been there the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, and I think it's one of those things where we just need to somehow carve out some time for these because things kind of keep keep uh, coming up and and pushing back those investigations. So uh, we'll we'll keep them there in the ready for development column, and um, I think just try to try to carve out some some time for those. Uh, yeah, any. Other, yeah, I, I guess the other ready for development items we, we talked about before in, in the epics themselves. So just next steps for the single command to promote a primary being extended to um, being extended to multi-node deployments. Um, I think likely that probably won't won't have much progress on it until Douglas is is back from vacation with um, with everything else that we've got going on, uh, and then of course the um, first iteration for uh, for moving LFS files to self-service framework and that placeholder. Um, Alex has volunteered to uh, to take on um, going through that and, and breaking out issues for it. So yeah, those are the other big uh, kind of the new uh, items in, in the ready for development uh, open or almost ready for development uh, area. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, any other, anything else I've missed in for ready for development items that we should be thinking about? All right. Yeah. I think we can stop sharing and I'll stop the recording.